Hi. Here we are. Again, again. I feel like there's a there's something really uh, sweet about returning to uh, a little hiatus from teaching. Um, if you've been in my classes in the past, if you've known um, just a little bit about me, um, I've described many times and in many ways uh, how uh, there's been a challenge for me to, uh, to step away, to walk away. And this is becoming more, I'm getting more enlightened by uh, admitting this and, and talking more of it into uh, um, sort of uh, unsafe spaces. Uh, sort of the experience of owning your FOMO, um, if you felt left out, or a fear of if you don't show up that you might miss something, right? Um, I have been always a part of that, as well as probably that attachment part that I, I try so hard to um, teach through and understanding rather than sort of only teach it if I understand it, because if that's the case, then I may never teach it. <laughs> um, so I give myself and you course, um, all the permission to keep learning and to stay on your path. Um, so part of uh, this little week that I've had off, though it's been refreshing, uh, there has been also kind of an honoring a feeling like there's something uh, missing. And missing uh, has been more about having the contact. And I've been grappling with the idea of is this contact since it's recorded, right? Um, I, I'm going to wait and see, right? I know that there's something still really uh, missed and there's a value to the live component of having a feed or a stream, if you will. And if that's what we're now considering live, I also need to work through my resistance <laughs> because um, what we used to think was live is obviously sort of um, something that uh, we're still struggling with. I am. Uh, in the this month's October forecast in the shamanic moon cycle, and this week specifically, but as we've been working through this whole month, you may notice this. Um, the the uh, the common thread is um, keep going, no matter what. So it's keep going like dot dot dot, <laughs> no matter what. I forget what that dot, dot, dot means, uh, or there's a word for it, right? How to describe what that is. But um, that space that is the dot, 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 it's like that, that pregnant pause of, mm, is the quiet sort of knowing face of, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so that's what I mean, right? Keep going, no matter what. I am too, and that's why I'm here. Uh, let's come to a comfortable seat, and we'll just take a moment. This is a 30-minute practice to to be whoever you are and to be that in the way that you are developing and to keep going with that um, try to stick with the positive aspects of that right so change doesn't always mean we're changing things that are um, bad about us or things that are unsavory or unliked by you it might just be that we're changing up the way that we look at things so uh perhaps a little bit of the backdrop, perhaps of the earth underneath you, or maybe just the way that you feel the sky above you. Mm, let your hands come together, your heart, and to all the changes that come and will keep coming, and to all the ways in which that the importance of missing things is probably where the, uh, the best opportunity might be. So, so remember that Sometimes those pauses or those little things that seem like glitches um, be may, may be more useful than you know. Okay, take a gentle bow to that, that query, right? That space. And if you hold that in your heart, release your hands and open your eyes. Uh, okay, let's go to our mats. Um, I'm playing a pretty fun playlist that I'm just kind of noticing. It showed up today. Today's Monday, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Um, if you're watching this and you want to comment um, on the audio quality, um, I wouldn't be so mad as to sort of hear that and make uh, a change if that's necessary. Because I know that I'm, um, I'm using my, my AirPods right now for a simple reason of just making sure that the audio is more connected to my voice. 
Um, but if it ends up sounding obviously like uh, um, unmuffled or that it's, uh, it's hard to register, then that is the case. Alright, so starting from the front of my mat, as well, be you. Alright, I am to, uh, I guess, the left side of the mat. Take your arms up to the sky. Mm -hmm. When your arms are up to your spine, I know you can't see my hands right here. I'm going to interlace my fingers and then I'm going to turn the palms to face up. So I'm, I'm opening up from the inside out because what is this is stretching, right? The palms tend to be the front body. It's the inner arms and the forearms which tend to also sort of face their center. So by doing this, we're kind of peeling ourselves open from the place that tends to get loose. Let those arms go. Relax to roll, fold. This is a flow practice. This flow practice, as you may have already known that when we started this, um, is that we're just going to keep moving, right? And we're just going to keep moving, right? Keep moving, keep feeling, and just keep recognizing what's showing up. We don't have to really sort of analyze it, we just have to feel it. Okay? And how to feel about that. And your exhale, two knees bend, touch the floor, left foot steps back. Okay? And so if you haven't done a lunge such as this in a while, take a moment to notice how you adjust into yourself here. Right? So that is always uh, an interesting little sort of curious moment, right? So because I'm guiding and we're moving through the step and the next step, um, we tend to get really caught up with instruction. But notice that there is a lot of instruction that is going on right there inside. If you pay attention to this, right? How much you can notice where your low belly is, or where that belly is. Okay, left foot steps forward. Now to the back up. Then your exhale, fold. And you're in the forward back. Take it all the way up on the chest. And then I'll go the arms up, interlace the finger, palms up again. Up to reach, exhale with the release, and find that forward back. Okay. Inhale to the flat back, so this exhale, we soften bend your knees, your fingers touch, and right foot steps back. There's your low back. Same cues as before, so the cue is easy, it's sort of cued by you. Right? Where is it that might be, you might notice right if you're feeling really tight, you might start really high in the hips, or you might be just kind of really, really high in your breath, and that might be a reason for that also. Just letting yourself arrive. Right? You're here. Let's see what happens. Right? So the hips might lower to be at least sort of somewhere in the range of the height of that left knee. Right foot steps forward on your next inhale. Inhale to move that back. And exhale, hold. Third time here, interlace the fingers, turn the palms up, so you can the inside out of the arms. And just like a little bit more of that energy, kind of getting a little bit sort of wide open. And that experience might be described as getting a little bit dizzy or lightheaded. Right? So that's where we notice it. We can pause and let that energy catch up. It might be a little energy in front of us or behind us. So we can make sure that we're in a safe place. Right here. Release those arms. <laughs> Forward and back. Inhale to move that back. Alright, in this exhale, you're going to step the left foot back. So you're in that little lunge. Alright, and then you're going to gently just sweep the arms back and the palms are up. And this is just going to switch us to the other side of the mat. So you're going to sweep the arms up and come up to a high lunge. We're going to turn over your left shoulder so you go into a wide straddle. And then high lunge to your left leg. And then hands touch the floor. Okay, like this up, forward. Inhale to the flat back. Inhale again, all the way up. Look that reach. And you can interlace the fingers now as by Yogi's choice, or you can just freely reach and kind of let that organization kind of come in from your intuition. Where to reach, how to reach, what your arms feel like, look like, what they need. So you want to release that. All of that breath, all the way down. So letting your breath kind of guide you, right? I know that we can go into some, some interesting guided meditations with, um, with kind of breath holding and breath sort of expanding. 
Um, when we're here, we're just gonna let the breath kind of kind of feed us information, right? So you'll notice if we move the body, the breath will kind of flow quickly to the legs. Left foot steps back. Okay, hands reach back again, palms up. Reach the arms up here in the high lunge. Turn this one over your right shoulder. So you're going for a tall twist. We're using this tall twist to kind of reference a little bit sort of a longer or farther way from the center um, destination. So that'll give us a nice big sweep up through high lunge, through your straddle, and then over to your left lunge, and then twisting to the left. Okay, so it's a nice little chest opener, it's a nice little toner for the upper back, the rectum muscles, and your upper back shoulders. Okay. We take that hands to the floor, and the left foot, and right foot steps forward. All right, so we're gonna to start to link this a little bit more and bring in some of the vinyasa. So inhale to lift that back. Exhale, hold. Follow this inhale nice and smooth. All the way up, right? Drive your own momentum, not mine. And then exhale, release that. Follow it back. Looking good. Left foot steps back. Low lunge. This is going to get a little bit different. We're going to go for a three-legged chaturanga. Then straighten the arms and replace the foot. Left finger hands. Arms sweep back. And then sweep them up. And then take a sweep over your right shoulder right here. There you are. Looks good. Then you're going to take the arms up around the left shoulder. Over to the left. There you go. And over the left shoulder. Cool. Awesome. Now you're going to follow that right hand, hands to the left foot, left leg goes back, and up, you lay chaturanga, straighten the arms, place the foot between your hands, and just step forward, okay. and now to a flat back. Exhale, hold. Looking good. Inhale all the way up, arms reach up. We're going to add a chair pose here. Pretty nice. And then take that to a forward bow. Pretty well. Okay, continuing that flow. Inhale to the flat back. On your exhale, knees bend, hands touch, right foot steps back. It's pretty good, right? We're gonna go for that three legged chaturanga. And then you're gonna take that to an up dog. Okay, don't forget that right foot. You can make the foot on the floor here. On your next exhale, you're gonna lift back to three legged dog, right foot back. And then place that foot palm between your hands. Okay, palms reach back and then arms reach up. And take that twist over your left to your right shoulder. And so you add a little bit more of a sink and a pause. You can give yourself a moment to drop that left knee down. Lift up to that left arm. Okay, and the left foot left knee comes up. You come around. There's your wide straddle. Over to your over your left shoulder. And then here's a twist here, right knee down, left hand to right, half and beat with thigh, then right arm up. Awesome. Okay, on your next inhale, you're gonna come back through center. And then when you bow forward, first sweep the arms back. So you haven't got much of these arms sweep back from that, that your left foot forward. Right, and then bring the hands to the floor. Left foot's gonna go to a very legged chatter on that. Go up dog. Okay, you get your little moment there. Shine. And your exhale, and your tuck or roll. It's left leg back for a three legged dog. Ooh. And you straighten this up. Left foot steps forward. Ooh. And right foot steps to the good. There you go. Here we go. Inhale to the left back. And exhale. Inhale all the way up. Okay, feel free to turn that. Expand the back then, and then nice emptying out all the way in. Right, get rid of that the old air, some of those old feelings that get stuck in the wind. Your energy, your breath energy. And now to the flat back. On your exhale, hands touch. Left foot steps back. Good feet. Here we're going right leg to a three legged chaturanga. And then sweep the chest forward. Up dog. Down dog, it's back to the right leg through that dog. Let's go open hip out. 
I'm actually take this a little bit further to open that hip and go to a tree version of a side plank. Right arm's either reaching forward up to the sky. Okay, right hand comes back to the mat. As you lift your left heel, it steps forward. Okay, arms reach back. And then arms reach up. So now we feel a little bit more back bending into the warmth center of the building. High lunge. Next exhale over the right shoulder. Hello. Feel a little bit more sort of precise with how we place our legs, right? So um, don't experience that, don't get trapped in that FOMO feeling of maybe how you used to practice or how other people you know practice or how you wish you practiced. Just practice where you are now. Right hand back to the left leg. Left arm reaching to my favorite little lunge twist. Follow, come up, do the wide straddle, and then we're gonna take the wide straddle follow back. Okay, so take a little, pay a little respect to those hamstrings, a little bit of moment here to lean into the toes. Okay, so our grand finale today is doing a little headstand from wide straddle to see if I'd like to know the future. <laughs> come all the way up, okay, bring it your left shoulder. Here is your lunge. Ooh, so we're gonna step that one into first, like sort of our big starters. Arms reach back, right? And then hands down here. We go left leg, go up. Leg at Chaturanga. Or up dog. Right. Slide up dog. Leg to down dog. Left leg back and then hip open. Right, and this is just a nice little opportunity to kind of play with watching yourself move, right? You can watch that right heel and rotate to the right. If you're sort of very flexible or mobile in those ankles, you might even be able to get the right foot entirely to the torso. So good. Left foot, and you're receiving that right leg. And then you just kind of let yourself explore your strength, right? I'm doing I'm going for a little back bend here, so I'm really Feeling that plug in, those arm bones, shoulders on your back, great right open heart. Left hand whoo, to the floor, and then that left knee tucks, place the foot forward between your hands. Whee, arms to reach back, and then arms to reach up. Let that settle in. Sometimes when we get into a flow, we start to feel like we have to just kind of like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or step to eight if you're a dancer, right? Um, but we really just let the breath sort of be our pace, right? Sometimes we really do want to move that fast, but we don't want to hyperventilate. <laughs> Left hand drop back, right arm reach up, and toss it back. Once again. Keep that back up. Arm on the shoulder, do a wide straddle. Let's get a little bottom down. Make my adjustments in the seats all, um, my assumption is that we're all in a place where we might have to be contending with the things around us, like our furniture, our things, our dogs, our cats, our hamsters, our fauna. <laughs> uh, you just be careful and precious with that. Precious with our ankles and knees and cold hearts and shoulders. These are our pets. Yay, come all the way up. Now we're going back to that right shoulder so that we can go to the right foot, right knee. We're actually going to swim this differently. Up, warrior three on that. Okay, and the stand. Left knee lifts. And this one, right leg lowers you into chair pose. Switch it up a little bit. So now you're in chair pose, keep the legs that lift the toes. Look into the tone of the core as it relates to the pelvis, right? The hands come to the floor and you're still, everything's still sort of fired up and engaged, ready to go, right? Keep going. Hands to the Plant to the floor, push it to the floor, and then very gently going to hop to Chaturanga and then to up top. So back to the floor. And then we'll start with one more set of oh, that flow. It's going to take us to our sort of our <laughs> All right, hops up or jump, looking forward to your thumbs. Feel free. All right, when you get there, inhale, flat back. All the way up, arms reach. Nice, bright heart. Follow the exhale. Forward out. Okay, inhale, flat back. Press 
self touch. Left foot steps back. Low lunge. Here we go. Right leg. We go to chaturanga. And up dog. Down dog. Right leg. Up and open. Okay. So going side plank here. Ooh. Might be a little wobbly today. Side plank with that little extra reach of the heart. It's like you're pulling your left ribs forward and up and tucking your left arm back and, and up. <laughs> okay, right hand to the floor, right foot step forward. Let's take this Anjaneyasana so we can take this a little further by getting a little more grounded to the floor. So you go left knee to the floor. So it's first that and then arms up. That's always a reassuring as well as a comforting um, version of this back bend twist, right? And turn over your right shoulder like you're swimming back. Right hand can reach back and down either to the foot or to the floor. And then if you use a block, that's also fun and fun, all right? And then you can kind of use that right hand to maybe just sort of guide you into your reach. That right foot is leaning, pressing down to the floor, give you space from the right thigh. Length from top of left thigh, tips of the fingers. Woo. Come up on the inhale. You have more than just your strength to get you up there in that. All right. We're going to come up to your wide straddle. And we're going to take that into your forward back. Okie dokie. Right here, this has got sort of so much space for you to figure out, right, what's this day like, this practice? Has this you know, afforded you that sort of mobility, warmth, uh, confidence, you know, flow, space room in your upper arms, the way that you can sink into the heart. And today is one of those days where you're like, yeah, this is that day, moving on. Right, so maybe elbows can come to the floor, you may have to jump them forward or a little farther back. Right. Think of lengthening your neck here to reach your head towards a place to touch the floor. And I say touch as sort of like a key word, right, a careful word. So I don't want you to, to over plant weight on the head and neck, okay? The idea is to be the most strong through your elbows, forward to your wrists, to the hands, and then possibly lift the heels to tiptoes, or possibly lift any variation of, of exploration or discovery to get your legs up to the sky. All right, and also, just get a smile into uh, whatever shape you're, you're making right now. And even for my friends that are up in the feet or in the sky, right, you're still making, still, it's still creating, it's still forming. Right? So we don't stop, right? So don't let go. Keep going. Keep the feet flexed. I'm going to a wide straddle to return the same way I came up. Okay? Take the time to watch yourself move. Be really careful with that. So you know every, every interval, what's going on? Especially if you have to describe it later. You're like, oh, this is how I felt then, and I knew exactly that precise millisecond, right? Feet around the floor. Oy! Inhaling up to a flat back, and then all the way up to the sky. Now we're going to the left, into the left leg, and up to where you're free. So this is a real reset. Then, the high switch. Okay, big long exhale. Calm down, empty it out. Exhale, start the side exhale. And now to the flat back. Awesome. Exhale, sit to chair. And the chair that we did with the tiptoes. Hopefully balanced, right? It's not always sort of in sort of absolutely sort of streamlining its kind of flowiness, right? Sometimes we do hit a little choppy waters, but choppy waters are always balanced by sort of what comes next, so it all levels out, right? Put hands on the floor. Hop that, jump up, right? Lift up to up dog. And hands, feet walk forward, hop forward to the hands. Flat back. And as you exhale to touch the floor, you bend. Right foot steps back. Ooh. A bit of 
Okay, this is going to be like a chaturanga. Mm -hmm. Two, a three, good up dog. Alright, your exhale is to three like a dog. Here's your open hip. Here's that side plank again. We all have our favorite sides, so we know that we're you know, really in our element when we know that like this is the one I would take a picture of, right? This is my side. I feel most secure in the shoulder, most secure with the foot. And you know, this is just something to sort of give influence to the other side where it might not be entirely insecure, but I just sort of has work to do. Mm -hmm. Alright, hand to the floor, left foot to step between your hands. Right knee. First we come up, make sure that you're feeling good in that low back, right? You can always give yourself a light touch, a little growth, a little security, confirmation. Okay? So you're going to twist over your left shoulder, left hand is either the floor or hip or leg, whatever works. Right arm and breath are going into that reach, left foot and pressing into the floor. Right, lots of room. <sighs> Pushing your foot to the floor. Wide knee, opening that space, and come right and left. Okay, come up. Ooh! And goes a little fast. Your right knee comes up and around. And there's your wide straddle. I'll give a little sort of a switch. I just have to remember that that's what I'm doing <laughs> to my wide straddle here. So, I guess what I should have said is we're doing two headstands today in this practice. So, this is your opportunity to for a headstand or whatever it is you do. Okay? So elbows on the floor, if you're really just loving, you can work the hamstrings. Stay there and just kind of allow yourself to be enamored with the quality of balance between not just some right foot to left foot, but sort of inner edge of the heel, right, towards the big toe, great toe, and how that sort of unfolds gracefully, the space expands to reach and sort of balance out the foot towards the pinky toe, and then back towards the outside of that right heel, okay? So we're giving our ankles a lot of sort of good, good exercise and you know, being dynamic as well as being very fluid. So for all those kind of whoops-a-daisies when you go out into the real world <laughs> and uh, the ground uh, changes on you without you noticing, okay? So as your head lands, right, comfortable, heels lift, possible, press down, elbows, and you're really taking your time to just stay with your center of gravity. It's not really shifting that much. Uh, it's just giving you an opportunity to kind of find where your limbs are and notice that your stability and your core, your center, right, proximal, startups, uh, really do give reference to the mobility and the place your articulation of those extremities, right? Your distal places, toes and feet. All right, so go back to that wide straddle. Yay. Whee! All right, come back to the floor. Boom. Yeah. You're going to inhale, go flat back, and then go back to where it was. And then finish over to the right. So we come up, arms up, sweep over. Lunge to the right foot, hands to the floor. Right, right foot steps back, and we plank forward. That's one of my favorite little actions of being in plank. You can do this with forearms, or you can do this straight arm. You're just only going to do a couple sort of the, the baby cat cows just in plank pose for the sort of sake of just kind of keeping the precision and the motor control of our scapular regions, right? So around the back right here, if you're doing a cat, you might even tuck the chin. And keep your legs and your hips where they are, but sink the heart down and then look forward and lift the chin. Okay, so you're rounding the back, lift the butt up too high, you might move a little bit, and then sink the heart. Right? I think I often say melt the heart because that's just kind of where my training started. One more time, round the back, you can tuck the chin so you don't crinkle the neck. And one more time, sink the heart and just bend you with the eyes forward. All right, this is gonna sweep you up. Little cobra or up dog. Okay, and then yeah, let the knees touch the floor and come up to all fours. Okay. So we'll have just a sweet little finisher here to kind of 
wrap it all up and make sure that we're sort of all together on this like this little beautiful adventure. Okay? So you're in all fours and that's really cute and fun. You're gonna take your left arm up to the sky. You're gonna thread it underneath you to the right. Okay? Now you're going to bend your knees, so put your finger up, yeah, and you're gonna pick up that right leg to open it. Just let your pinky toes touch, or your big toes. Right, so this is just like that little lion, little teapot, motion, shape. You don't have to do much more than that. And that's a kind of a nice place to wrap up and kind of finish up in something really sort of cute, graceful, and silly. Right knee to the floor, both feet to the floor. Press in that to right hand. So you're going to go back up, and that left shoulder is free. Woo! And then take that left hand to the floor. So I know some people are like, what's the point? Um, you realize that in your person after you do it. Um, I would like to tell you what the point is for me, but I want you to know why it is for you, so you have to do it to find out. <laughs> um, but you're here right now, so I kind of feel like, you know, you could be preaching to the choir. Let's do the other side. I'm going to try and show it from this side. Okay, I've got enough room. Right arm up. Oof. Yeah. And then right arm under, so you thread through. You can push up through your fingers. Mine are under my couch right now. <laughs> I'm on my right shoulder. And you might do a adjust, right? So where are your knees so that you can comfortably bend your knees and not be on your kneecaps? Right? So right here, you're getting a nice toning into your traverse abdominal muscles. Right, and those are nice. You've been up, you've worked about those a lot. Right, pick up that left leg, keep the knees bent, open the hip, and just let your little pointer toes touch. Right, so you've got a lot of that back of the right hand, your fingernails pressing into the floor, your shoulder as well. Your left hand's holding you from falling towards your right hand, and uh, you got work of the glutes keeping you from falling back behind you. Okay, bring your left knee to the floor, bring both feet to the floor. And then, now that we've done both of them, this part right here is the point of it. The second time you do this pose, this shape right here, this right arm reaching, and the other side, the result is freedom. It is felt, and it's something that sort of is your very own, and um, it's so good in what my interpretation is, is that I really wish that everyone knew exactly what you felt because I, because I think universally we all get from the other side of that. Uh, I'm sure in some cases I can go. I'm wagging my tail right now. I, I'm just going to do a minute to play with the lateral stretches. It's kind of fun and cute. Right, we'll go into a full flexion of the front body. So there's our cat. There's our real cow. And then two more like that. Exhale. So now I, I encourage and and I know there's just only so much some person can say, just not left, I think that can draw you into what you are doing. I have no idea what any of you want from your life, but I think that yoga gives us a good idea of kind of um, how valuable it is to be present or whatever it is that you're actually doing. It's just, uh, I don't know. Just want a Tesla, or if you, if you want to uh, be the mayor of your city. <laughs> right, come nice and easy. We're gonna come to just a, a quick and easy little seat. Right, so you can choose your seat whenever it is. With the eyes closed, right? Uh, yourself that little moment here to just notice your being. It can be confusing because the state is most likely changed since the beginning of the class and we, we tend to confuse our state and our being. But try to think of the state as being that sort of easily changeable thing, like moment to moment states can change. But your being is that part of your presence that you carry with you? Do you recognize it from your youth? Do you recognize it when you see yourself in a mirror? And do you even recognize it when you feel like you don't recognize yourself in the mirror? Do you love it when you feel you're complete? Do you 
grounded and you long for it if you feel like it's been compromised. I just need something that's shaking your calm from that place to recognize and love. It's here with you. Put your hands come together and for that sake, for knowing that we can get there and we need no other person outside of you yourself to appreciate what that's like. Bow gently to your center, to yourself. Namaste. And to all of you, to all of this, to being able to still share, uh, to tuning in, and at the same time to checking out, right? So you guys are a little bit of both to balance it. All right. Thanks for coming. Stay cute. Talk soon. Bye-bye.